practical, basic stuff that came out of a, a garden just around the corner. Yeah, for sure. You know, because it's been handled with integrity. It's been cooked to perfection. It's got a story. The people are connected to it. So when they deliver it, it's like the best thing they've ever seen in the world and they're communicating this thing to you. And I guess that's the key thing for me is to try and get that into our staff's mentality day in, day out. Yeah. That, And, I mean, I'm very much a process person, you know. So I, you know, talking before about, you know, having bad days in the kitchen and all the guests loving it and me still feeling disappointed is because I honestly feel if we don't do things in the way that we've agreed, it's not as good as it could be. So it doesn't matter what the final result looks like because I'm obsessed with the process, you know. And that, we talk about this a lot in leadership, but that when you when you've got clarity of the process and you've got clarity of, of what a good process looks like, you might also have a bad day of the you know, you might get some customers not enjoyed as much. That's but, right. But if you the process was good and you yeah. know what the process looking good looks like, yeah. you're okay. Like we did good today because yeah. we hit the process and the outcome, you know, regardless. And I think that's <laughs> what I'm really passionate about is people worrying more about the process yeah. than just worrying about outcomes because yeah. they'll change. That's right. And I mean, that's a, that's a really important thing that I've, I guess, come to over time in the restaurant and – you know, I guess. <clears throat> look, early on when you when you run a restaurant for the first time and you're cooking for the first time with your name on the door, so to speak, and and the reviews are getting written about you, you know, that's very personal. It's like you did this, you yeah. didn't do that, you know. And of course, you can't control every single thing, but you you're the you're the name, exactly. so it does fall on you, you know. Um, yeah, I guess it's like uh, I've got to say this, all right. Well, I think it's for, for me, it's like. You know, back to footy or sport. Yeah. You know, the, the team can win by six goals and play like shit. Yeah. And the coach can, right. and the coach can go. You know, if the coach is switched on, he'll yep. know yep. and go through. Actually, we didn't play where we wanted. Where yep. you could lose by ten points against one of the top sides, but we we hit the inside fifties. We yep. won that this man of stoppage. We actually the process was good. Yeah. We just didn't get the result. Yeah, that's that, okay. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. It's like. Um... You know, you go to an art gallery with your best mates and or your family and, and you agree on most things in life and you go and look at a painting and, and one hates it, one loves it, and one sort of doesn't care for it either way, you know. And food's a bit like that, you know. So even, you know, I'm quite confident that if we serve food to a customer, because of all the stages it's gone through, the process of like, I guess, you know, tasting things and making sure the quality's absolutely 100% before it hits the table... If someone still doesn't like it and we've gone through those processes, it's opinion. Yeah. If we did it badly and they didn't like it, well, maybe they've got a point. And I guess it's about making sure that everything is sent out to the guest and for us, every communication we have is done with the standard that we've set ourselves, with the way that we've agreed we're going to do it and we're all comfortable with that. And then after that point, if there's an issue with someone's opinion, well, we put it down to opinion. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's it's and it takes a lot of courage to reach that point. I think it For takes sure. it, it takes a long time of of being worried what people think. And of course, I still am because we work in a public spectrum. You know, we work in an area where every bloody time we put something on a table, someone's reviewing it, and it's like it's written up somewhere, whether it be a blog or you yeah. know or whatever. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you know, like whose whose opinion is the most important? Whose voice is loudest? You know, and sometimes they are just loud voices. They're not necessarily. Um, voices that have much knowledge of what they're speaking about, you know. So it's always about going, okay, guys, this is how we do it, and if we do it like this and it leaves this position as that, we should all be okay with that. We should all be okay to to, to take criticism yep. because we did the right thing that we set. And you, in that, Danny, like you, you know, you get the ratings and – all that stuff and people constantly, you know, got their list of top restaurants. Yeah. Are you, would you are you comfortable to go down ten spots but stick to your vision, deliver it how you want, and be authentic to to your plan and do that really well and go down ten spots as opposed to react to we need to get up ten spots and we need to change we need to change things. Yeah, I mean it's a tricky question really because unfortunately 10 spots or, or whatever it is, it's it's all linked to financial return. Yeah, yeah. So that's... What you know, it's unfortunately, it's... We get reviewed day in, day out, and it and as much as you'd hate to admit it, um, 
there's a there's a financial implication sometimes yeah. of both positive and negative reviews. And thankfully, we've never received a negative one that sort of means anything. You know, like we certainly haven't received any negativity in any of the the larger, more dependable press or lists. You know, yeah. we've always since we opened been in a pretty good spot. Um, but you know, I think like this year, for example, I mean. Just domestically, Bray appeared on about six or seven important, let's say, lists domestically this year. Yep. And internationally, probably about the same, you know. And, you know, if you're looking at putting lists that involve numbers, yep. i.e. this is number one and this is number 50 or whatever, you know, in Australia alone, as Bray was number one in one, number five in another, was the highest ranked restaurant in another, yeah. in terms of the score out of 20, 19 out of 20. Yeah. But didn't win Restaurant of the Year. Yeah. You know, so it's just like, who do you listen to? Yeah. And who's more important? And unfortunately, they're all probably important. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because they're all a direct, um, you know, they have different... Media's so split up now that everyone's got different readerships. Like, people come to the restaurant and they don't even know about the other three. They just know the one that they read, the, yeah. the list that they read, as if it's gospel. You know? Well, that's right. It's, the, it's this number. And because I read it, that's the only one that matters, and that's yeah. what I'll judge it. So, look, I, I'm com- comfortable to, to understand and know that what we do day in, day out, at the standard that we do it at, always sits us among the better restaurants. Yeah. Um, so, obviously, we're not going to stop doing that. For sure. Uh, personally... I always want to improve what we do and that comes down to a mix of do we feel like we improved uh, or was there some rating externally that confirmed that feeling yeah. for us or did that rating at the end of the year say, oh, you didn't improve, although we did improve. I mean, it's yeah. just so tough to understand like what's the right way to feel in this. But I guess, again, one thing that's been key to, to what we do is always – setting the standards from within and trying to achieve those things. So, I mean, this last 12 months was a really tough 12 months at Bray in yep. terms of um, some key senior staff leaving after a long period of time, yep. um, trying to reestablish, I guess, the highest management level again with existing staff but also bringing new people into the business. For sure. Um, amongst all of that, the the huge issues that you have trying to find senior key staff in Australia that have that I guess international experience and and reference point to understand where we sit in the scheme of things, but also then to evolve your cuisine, to improve the farm, to to deal with the dryness we've had and yeah. things like that. You know, um, do you Dan with the recruiting, especially of chefs and, and things like that? Do you look for just world class straight away, or do you look for that no. potential younger one that you can come up and train? Like what? A what's bit of both. Like? Yeah. like it's amazing. I mean, when you've got a pretty uh, independent and I guess um, you know personal sort of culture that might not necessarily follow what others do. Yeah, um, you can get a resume that's like made out of gold dropped in front of you and it have got like all jewellery all hanging off it because you've got, you know what I mean? It's, like yeah, it's, yeah. it's been everywhere, you yeah. know. They've worked for the best and all this type of stuff and they're just not the right people for yeah. you, you know. Like it's just like often those people are the – like I actually, unfortunately, I feel sorry for some people that have worked so hard. I sometimes get those resumes and just delete them because I just know they're not going to fit into who we are. And in that regard, although you need – senior staff in your kitchen, it's about really finding the right type of personality often, not necessarily skill base, that can get inside your team and, and sort of slip in and, and help to develop it, you know. And, I mean, personality over skill, I mean, everyone who works in our kitchen has a skill base. Yeah, for sure. I mean, no one's coming in super green. It's, it's the wrong place for you. You know, you need to go and get some training before you come and even approach us. Yeah. So at the end of it, it's down to who is this person and what, I guess, what sort of, you know, personal skills do they have? Yeah. And I'm much more about that. I mean, I guess I'm very particular in terms of the way that we do things and that's often personality, you know. And if you don't have that eye for detail or, or that, I guess, 
self-awareness in the sense that you're always, you know, benchmarking yourself against your own work yes, yesterday, yep, yep. as an example. Yep. Um, it's just the wrong place, you know. Like, you need to have some self-motivation. Yeah, and I think, mate, I think... And one thing, you know, when I spoke to your wife, Jules, it's like you guys have sort of hit your benchmarks, you know, and you're really on track for how you want to progress. Like, how do you reevaluate and then want to go forward and develop and develop braid? I gather listening to you, it's not just about maintaining that standards, it's actually elevating. Yeah. Yeah, it's tricky. We just had our fifth birthday and it's probably, it's, you know, although we reflect all the time and, and I guess, you know, but it was over five years ago we wrote a business plan, yeah. you know, and, and actually went through that stuff properly. And it's probably not a bad time to sit down and do that again. Yeah, okay. And, I mean, maybe it's not a business plan, but certainly a plan of, of who we are and where we want to be. And I think, I mean, one of the one of the great things about working closely with, I guess, your life partner or someone who understands who you are innately or where you've been or whatever, you know, the craziest thing you say sometimes doesn't necessarily surprise them. It's almost like, oh, yeah, that again, or, yeah, I guess that was coming, or whatever, you know what I mean? Like, it's, yeah. it's there's a there's a freedom within the space to to be a little bit over the top For sometimes, sure. you know, and I think that's quite a good creative space to be in. And I guess, um, yeah, I mean, I think, look, I think it's open for re-evaluation at the moment, who we are, and certainly... I'd like the opportunity to sit down at some point in the near future and and sort of be away from what we do day to day to yeah. actually go. All right, let's. What, where's this thing going? You know, because it's not forever. You know, yeah. I mean, people. I think people sort of see who you are and what you do and think that's you forever and ever. And, and you know, look, it's pretty taxing what we do for sure. I've got no issues saying that it's not forever, yeah. but I certainly want it to be as good as it can be up until the day it's not, yeah. you know. And so, um, yeah, I mean, look, at, I don't think there's a moment where we're not re-evaluating internally what we do. Do we yeah. put it on paper and, and see it through? Quite often, you know, like I think one thing that we do all year, every year is like three, four, five times a year. And I know businesses to sort of do that financially when you're very close to your own business and you go, or let's redo the budget, let's redo yeah, the yeah. stuff again. So a lot of times that we do that, you know, it's a financial point of view, but within doing that, it also goes, you go, well, where's this taking yeah, us, yeah. you know? So in that, how, I gather the the importance of creating space to do that, like the space within yourself to step away and go, mm. well, where are we, even mid-year, um, the space to go and look at, who else is doing good stuff? Like, how much of that do you give yourself to really get away or give yourself the mental vacation away to actually come back to it? Probably not enough. <laughs> I mean, one thing we do do, we do shut the business. Like, we do, we did from day dot decide that, um, you know, for us to, to operate at this level day in, day out, obviously... Our daughter's eight years old now, yeah. and or eight in January, and uh, you know we're we're quite conscious of of being a close family and and wanted to give her time and not just always about the restaurant and about us and that type of thing. Um, we close a restaurant, so we close a restaurant for six six weeks a year. Yeah, you know, and we do you know this January we're doing three and a half weeks, and we do about two and a half in in winter. Beautiful, and you know, like it's. I guess people from the outside maybe, and they say to us like, oh, yeah, I guess, why are you closing over summer? It's a busy time, you know, and winter, is that your quiet time? And for us, the Do middle it. of winter or the middle of summer is exactly the same. There's yeah. no up and down really. It's it's just it's just how it is. And um, in a 40-seat restaurant that only does six, seat, six services a week, it's busy every day. It's busy, <laughs> yeah. and a busy time doesn't help you because no. it's just more people waiting. You know, yeah. I think there's some weeks when we have bloody sixty on a wait list, sixty tables on a wait list on a Saturday night. You know, like it's just ridiculous. Yeah. You know, so yeah, I mean, just closing and getting away, and actually just having a proper family holiday yeah. uh, without the expectation to go to restaurants to see what people are doing is yeah. really important. I sort of tend to do that uh, through work, 
during the year anyway. Yeah. Um, and sometimes it might be a whole year before we do something and then go away for 